What's up people, Lance Moza here, the guy with the one tech mind. Since you all love my Apple ecosystem tips video so much, I've decided to turn it into an ultimate tip series where I will focus on one Apple device or service at a time and share with you the tips and tricks I use every day that are often overlooked or not so obvious. And I'm kicking things off with our favorite pocket device, the iPhone. So you might as well call me Morpheus because I'm about to upload a bunch of knowledge right into your brain. One Tech Mind. Number 12, don't force close your apps. This one's a bit of a public service announcement, if you will, but please, I beg you, stop killing or force closing your apps on the regular. Apple has engineered iOS to provide robust access to apps when default settings are enabled, like background app refresh, which keeps your apps updated with current information as often as possible. Many developers also take advantage of special software accommodations that allow their apps to respond and open as quickly as they can, even when they haven't been used for a while. So when you go and force close an app, you are killing its current state, which will cause it to open slower the next time you launch it. Now with all that said, there are situations where you do have to force close an app, namely if it's not responding at all or is just acting generally buggy as apps tend to do sometimes. But on a normal day-to-day -day basis, I promise you, your iPhone will work most efficiently if you just let the apps do their thing. There is one little caveat. Background app refresh will use up some of your battery. So if you have an older iPhone or an iPhone 12 mini, you may want to go into settings, general, background app refresh, and turn it off for your less critical apps. You can also see which apps are using more background battery by visiting your battery settings and clicking show activity. From here, you can weed out the ones that are using way too much battery in the background. Number 11, manipulate text like a pro. Writing and manipulating text on a phone isn't always easy, especially for fine tuned selections, but there are hidden gestures that make this way easier. For instance, to move the text cursor around, just tap and hold on the space bar for about half a second, then drag your finger around and drop it wherever you need to, just like a laptop trackpad. Adding on to this, if you want to select text quickly, instead of dropping the cursor, just position it at your starting point, tap with a secondary finger, and drag to your endpoint. From here, you can overwrite the selected text, copy, paste, you get the picture. To select a single word, just double tap it directly on the screen. You can also triple tap to select a whole paragraph at once. There are also three finger gestures you can perform to manipulate text even further. If you make a mistake while typing or pasting some content, you thankfully no longer have to shake your phone or iPad like a madman to perform an undo function. All you have to do now is take three fingers and perform a quick swipe to the left and it will undo. You can also swipe right to redo. Additionally, you can pinch inward with three fingers to copy your selection or do this twice in rapid succession to perform a cut. And to paste, simply pinch outward as if you're dropping the content right onto the screen. You can also access all these options via a little taskbar by simply tapping the screen with three fingers once and using the buttons that pop up. This is particularly helpful if you want to use undo or redo a few times in succession. Number 10, set default apps for browser, mail, and music. If you want to use something other than Apple's Safari for web browsing or mail app for email by default, you can make this change to a third party app as long as the developer supports it. For example, to change your default browser to Google Chrome, just go into settings, scroll down to find Chrome, then tap default browser app and change it over. From then on, when you tap on links that normally would open in Safari, they will open in Chrome instead. And this process is exactly the same for setting a default mail app like Outlook, for example, which is the one I prefer to use. Setting your default music app though, not so straightforward. Apple's hidden the setting behind Siri and it's not really a hard coded setting that you could access. If you ask Siri to play a song or content, she may ask you which app you would like to use. From here, you can select your preferred music and allow it access to the corresponding app's data, which Siri will then remember for next time. You can also ask Siri to specifically play something in a given app by saying something like play some rock in Pandora but she may ask you which app you'd like to use again in the future by default. And like I mentioned, there's no way to change it at will, which is the really odd part. Number nine, app library and home screen app selection. 
In iOS 14, Apple introduced the app library to the far right of the home screen. This section automatically organizes all your apps according to their App Store category. I really love this feature because I only use the first home screen anyway and use Spotlight Search to launch apps in the app library. If you want to do something similar, you can set any new app you download to skip your home screen pages entirely and only show up in the app library by navigating to settings, home screen, and selecting app library only under the top section. This makes for a super clean and efficient home screen experience with only your most used apps on the first page. But if you prefer multiple home screens, here's another organization tip. You can select and move more than one app at a time using two fingers. First, enter jiggle mode by touching and holding an app. Then touch the first app you want to move and without letting go of it, touch any of the other apps you want to move as well with another finger. This groups them together for easy transportation into folders, other pages, and you can even throw them into the app library. By the way, let me know in the comments below if you prefer one home screen like me or if you like organizing your home screen by different pages. Number eight, the wake up alarm. If you've ever forgotten to enable your alarm before going to bed and woken up to the existential dread of being late for work, this next tip is sure to relieve some anxiety. Using one of the iOS sleep features, you can set a dedicated wake up alarm customized for your routine. If you're setting this up for the first time, you need to establish your bedtime and wake up times for however many combinations of days you need weekdays and weekends, for example. Once set, turn on wake up alarm for each set of days, then select a wake up alarm ringtone. The awesome thing about these ringtones is they are exclusive to the wake up alarm and are far less jarring than the standard ringtones in the normal alarm section of the clock app. Once set up, you'll see your dedicated wake up alarm at the top of your alarm list in the clock app, safe from ever being accidentally disabled. And if you ever need to change it for a particular morning, tap the change button, adjust the wake up time, hit done, then change next alarm only. Your normal wake up times will then resume on the following day. Number seven, block ads with content blockers. If you're tired of seeing ads on web pages in Safari, you can download a content blocker app from the app store to hide them from your browsing experience. There are an astronomical amount of content blockers out there, but the one I prefer is Mozilla's Firefox Focus. You may have heard of Firefox. They make one of the most private browsers out there. And I use Focus because Mozilla is an awesome nonprofit company with a great track record for privacy and a huge advocate for the open internet. Firefox Focus is also its own dedicated private browser app, which is useful for browsing anonymously, like when you're buying a gift for someone or testing websites without saved cache, history, or cookies. I mean, that's all people use private browsing for anyway, right? No matter which content blocker you pick, installing them is pretty straightforward. Once you've downloaded one, go to Settings, Safari, Content Blockers, and flip the switch to turn it on. Once enabled, ads should vanish from most web pages depending on the content blocker you're using. And if you ever want to turn off content blockers for a particular site permanently, you can whitelist it by tapping the double A icon in the address bar, then website settings and disable content blockers. You can also manually refresh a single page without blocking any content by clicking the double A's, then turn off content blockers. Sometimes I find you have to do this if the blocker hides some of the content on the page by accident. All right, we're about halfway through the list. If you learned something new from this video, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to help build the most obsessed community in tech and ringing the bell so you don't miss anything else. With that out of the way, we're gonna kick things up a notch with a lightning, lightning round. round. These are smaller, quicker tips that make a world of difference when it comes to using your iPhone. Number six, change Wi-Fi and Bluetooth from Control Center. To change your Wi-Fi network without going all the way into the settings app, instead go to Control Center, tap and hold the radios on the top left, then tap and hold the Wi-Fi icon and select another network. To connect or disconnect Bluetooth devices, follow the same exact process, but tap and hold on the Bluetooth icon instead, followed by your desired device. Number five, calculator backspace. If you're in the middle of a major calculation and you type the wrong number, instead of spamming the C button and cursing your fingers, 
just swipe left or right on your calculation as many times as required to delete the typos and keep on calculating. Number four, share sheet customization. To organize the list of apps in the share sheet, swipe all the way to the left and tap more. Then tap edit to add your favorites and move them around as needed for quicker access next time. You can also turn off some of the suggested apps from here if you never share to certain ones in particular. You can also scroll all the way down the share sheet and tap edit actions to organize common actions specific to the share sheet in a similar manner. Number three, emergency SOS. If you're in an emergency situation and you need to call attention to yourself, just hold the side button and one of the volume buttons at the same time for five seconds. I'm sure you've done this accidentally a bunch of times and scared yourself senseless. I know I have. But once the countdown is over, your phone will call emergency services for your current area. You can configure this further under settings and emergency SOS and disable and enable other features. Also, once you start the SOS process, your phone will require your passcode to unlock it on the next attempt. This alone can be useful if someone ever tries to grab your finger or face to unlock your phone. Number two, smart markup shapes. When you're using Apple's markup tools to doctor a screenshot or other document, you could draw precise shapes quickly while using the pen or pencil tool. For instance, to draw a perfect circle, just draw a terrible one first, then pause at the end of your line until the scribble snaps into shape. This also works when drawing triangles, squares, rectangles, even stars, and my personal favorite, arrows. Number one, natural language in reminders. It works like this. When you type the name and content of a reminder, you can also specify its due date and time using natural language. For example, I could type something like, call the dentist next Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. and the date and time will be recognized and changed to blue text. If you tap on it, it will be committed to your reminder and you're all set. This is way faster than entering the date and time separately via the details menu. So there you have it, 12 ultimate tips for iPhone that I'm hoping will benefit you every single day. Let me know what your favorite one was down in the comments below, or if you have one that maybe I didn't talk about today. Keep an eye out for more tips and tricks videos on iPad, Apple Watch, Mac, and more as I work on rounding this series out. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for daily Apple and tech anecdotes and analysis. And until next time, thanks for listening to my One Tech Mind.